Jamestown was founded in 1607, and though there was conflict with the natives pretty much from the get-go, it wasn't until 1610 that actual war were declared. Also, we're going with puppies and kittens this time. Alright, so let's get a couple of things out of the way real quick. First off, when you think of John Smith, this is probably what comes to mind. Yeah, no, this is John Smith. Less 90s Mel Gibson, more 2010s Mel Gibson. Powhatan is about right, well, close enough for government work, and Pocahontas was way younger than normally depicted, most likely 10 or 11 when she first met John Smith. So, no, no romance there unless there was, in which case, ugh. Oh, and the whole Pocahontas saving John Smith from being executed thing, Smith came up with that several years later in a letter to Queen Anne, not to be confused with the Queen Anne that came along about 70 years later and who the War and Blackbeard ship were named after. Smith was captured about seven months after arriving, though he was spared when he lied and convinced his captors that he was the son of the chief of the settlement and that they would move if they let him go. Spoiler alert, they didn't move. Smith ended up sailing back to England in 1609 after being injured in a gunpowder explosion, leaving George Percy in charge, and though, John Ratcliffe kind of ran things. Bad things happened to Ratcliffe, we'll get to that, but through a lack of farming knowledge, drought, and the loss of resupply ships, plus the natives deciding that it was time for the colonists to leave, the settlers experienced what was known as the Starving Time where in one winter the population of Jamestown went from about 500 to around 60. And yes, there was at least one case of cannibalism. After this, the colonists began to all question whether abandoning the settlement might be the right thing to do. In May of 1610, they chose to do just that, packing up and setting sail, but they only made it two days before running into a fleet led by Virginia Governor Thomas West. The third Baron Delaware, yes, his name is where Delaware comes from. He'd arrived with reinforcements and supplies after hearing of the settlers' troubles, particularly the capture and killing of John Ratcliffe. Yay, yeah, he's back, and we don't really have any other pictures of him, so this is what we're going with. Who had led a group of men to receive promised corn from the natives, but instead they were ambushed, with Ratcliffe being tied in front of a fire and having his skin stripped off by women, with muscle shells, and then the pieces thrown into the fire. Eventually they burned him alive, but not until they removed his face. Not a great way to go, let's see Disney make a movie out of that one. West wasn't having any of this retreat tomfoolery and believed full-on war was the only answer. Keep in mind here that the Powhatan Confederation was a combination of about 30 tribes. Hell, look how far the Algonquin language spread. It consisted of about 20,000 people. It was technically known as Sinekumaka, but it's normally called the Powhatan Confederation because A, it was created by Chief Powhatan, whose name is actually Chief Wahuna Sunaka, through a combination of diplomacy and good old-fashioned brute force, and B, look at it, you try to pronounce that. It means densely inhabited land for those of you wondering. So West sent Powhatan an ultimatum that he had to hand over all prisoner colonists and all colonial property. Powhatan answered this that, hey, that's fine, but you either have to stay in your fort or leave the area. West's response was to send the same message he had sent the first time, but with the severed hand of a native prisoner along for the ride. Powhatan did not respond to this because, let's face it, everybody knows that once you start sending body parts through the mail, the time to negotiate is pretty much over. So in 1610 began the First Anglo-Powhatan War. George Percy was sent to the village of Paspahe, destroying their crops and burning the houses. The village never recovered and the tribe pretty much disappears from history about that point. Percy had history with Paspahe. The tribe had been responsible for multiple raids throughout the years. The settlers captured a wife of war chief while Winchipunk while Winchipunk and their children, throwing the children into the river before shooting them and taking her back to Jamestown just to stab her to death. Ambushes and skirmishes instigated by both sides continued on, with Wawinchapunk being killed in early 1611 and his death being avenged by the killing of several colonists. A new lieutenant governor arrived, Thomas Dale, who took over the colony seeing as West went back east, haha, <laughs> to England after falling ill. Now, Dale wanted to expand, creating new settlements along the James River, but the man that was really making moves was Samuel Argyll. While visiting the semi-friendly Patawomic tribe, yes, that's where Potomac comes from, he noticed Pocahontas was living with them while on a trade mission. He convinced the Patawomic to allow him to capture her and hold her as ransom to her father, and he succeeded in this. 
With her as a captive who was well treated and well taken care of, I should add, Powhatan declared an immediate ceasefire, and after negotiations, the first Anglo-Powhatan War ended. In 1614, peace was finally signed between the two sides and sealed with the marriage of Pocahontas to John Rolfe. Fun fact, John Rolfe was the man that successfully blended Spanish tobacco with the wild tobacco found in Virginia and turned it into a cash crop. They ended up having a child and she died, possibly a smallpox in England, ironic right, in 1617 at age 21. Oh, and Pocahontas may or may not have been married to Cocoaum prior to being captured, and he may or may not have been killed afterward. He also may or may not have existed, considering there's only a single mention of him. We do know that Powhatan died in 1618, with his younger brother taking over, but it was his youngest brother, Opechancano, Opechon Senna, or this for those wondering, had become more and more powerful during Powhatan's final years and was seen as the leader after his passing. He kept the peace with the colonists, but he really didn't think it would last and began to make preparations for when it ended. This occurred when one of his closest advisors was murdered by a colonist, and the result was the massacre of 1622, which began the Second Anglo-Powhatan War. Most likely occurring on April 1st, worst April Fool's joke ever by the way, a series of surprise attacks were carried out across over 30 settlements, killing roughly 400 colonists or about a third of the colonists in Virginia. Jamestown was lucky, seeing as a native boy, wait I don't like how that sounds, a young native that lived with the colonists had informed them of the plot ahead of time, allowing for them to be somewhat ready. Point of the attacks was to frighten the colonists into either leaving or falling in line, but they learned a valuable lesson about the people that would become Americans. When attacked, they don't get scared, they get mad. Really mad. And so for the next 10 years, the colonists carried out attacks and raids of native villages, plundering their crops in an attempt to starve them out. Also in this time, several tribes aligned themselves with the colonists, and a truce was declared in 1632, allowing the colonists to continue expanding and further shrinking Powhatan power, which is not to be confused with puppy power. I think it's just best that everyone forgets about puppy power. There was peace for about 12 years, not too shabby if I say so myself before Opechicano decided that he wanted to give that whole driving off the colonist thing one more cotton pick and try, and it ended rather badly. The third Anglo-Powhatan War, yep, it was a trilogy, lasted two years and ended with the capture, parading, and killing of Opechicano, who was between 90 and 100 years old at that point, and the tribe signed a peace treaty with the colonies becoming tributaries to the English crown. This ended major hostilities between the two sides for a good chunk of time, but of course they flared back up eventually, but that's another tale for another video. Oh alright, I'll give you the scantily summarized Cliff's Notes version. I'll probably end up doing a full video on it anyway, but it ended with Bacon's Rebellion, named after Nathaniel Bacon, not that sweet, sweet pig meat, but did partially have to do with the stealing of hogs. So, you know, you can't make this kind of stuff up in 1676. It was a wide-scale uprising against natives that ended with the creation of reservations. So that's where those come from. Casinos came later. Mm -hmm.